Hey guys, welcome to my tattoo tutorials and on today's video I'm going to be learning you how to create the perfect tattoo stencil. Here's what we're going to be doing and if the video helps you or it might help anyone you know please give it a share or a like or subscribe or whatever it is. But yeah, here's what we're doing and I hope you learned something from it. Enjoy. Right, so let's get straight into it. So we've got an image that we're happy with. I've opened this up on uh, Photoshop, which is a program that I use to do a lot of designs on and mainly the stencils on, to be honest. Um, I do use a mix of Procreate and Photoshop, depending on the design. With Photoshop, I just find, especially for more realistic stuff, it works a lot better for me. It is just preference, but I find with Procreate, things end up a little bit cartoony when you're using the brushes and stuff so for realistic stuff yeah this is my go-to um, so I'll be tattooing it in black and grey obviously that's what I do um, so at the top here I'm gonna go image adjustments and just turn it black and white to start with um, and click OK over there and then image again adjustments, brightness and contrast just that brightness up ever so slightly I find that with most images it does tend to go quite dark when you turn it black and white so just up a tiny bit and that's spot on so ok there and now that I'm happy with the size and everything else um, I then go up to the top and click filter and then filter gallery now this is where it gets quite interesting on the stencil so on the bottom left I just zoom out a bit and it does normally depending on the picture give what it thinks is right but on the top right here there's two bars um, and they adjust the stencil as you can see there um, so I normally try and fiddle around with these and it's different each picture that I do. The filters on photocopy, uh, which is normally or, like automatic, but yeah, if it's coming up any different, it's photocopy is the one that you want. So I'm adjusting these, and like I do fa tend to see that it looks better on here with the detail up, you know, with all the blacks in on the picture, but to get the most detail on the stencil you have to remember that you'll be colouring in the black parts so you don't need them to be black on the stencil and the less that you have it black the more detail it picks up on so just that nice in between probably around there is fine and then the darkness obviously I get that that's just yeah on that picture it's about medium you know 19 on there and that, that works fine so when we're happy with how we, we've got it on there and that looks good um, you'll know yourself how you want it to look for the stencil but I do feel like especially on a picture like this it picks up more detail than you could draw on the stencil for a realistic picture so in parts like here where it's really detailed and it has thick to thin parts, little textured parts um, even down to in between the whiskers that that would take hours doing it as a hand stencil whereas the computer filter it does it perfectly and exact and you can see that when you move that away I mean you can see them both side by side there and it is just immaculate so the computer can do that stencil way better than what I could hand stencil it so that's why I use this filter. So when we're happy, we click OK. Um, and then because the stencil printer prints them out ever so slightly lighter, just due to it putting the ink on the paper, I normally do just lower the brightness um, just a little bit more. And uh, that might be different each computer, to be honest, but yeah the way it prints out is just ever so slightly lighter so I just consider that when I'm uh, going to print it 
Um, so the printer, stencil printer, it also prints things backwards. So when you're happy and you have the final design, um, I flip it round the other way. Um, it just comes out backwards. So yeah, once we have it like that. So another little trick here, when it prints through the printer, which you'll see in a minute, I'm gonna show you. Um, to keep the image printing nice and smoothly through, especially if it's an image that curves, you know, for example, like a snake or something, um, the printer is gonna to want to like turn and pull as it prints. So what I do is by clicking shift, I just do with a brush line straight down the sides and that helps when it pulls through the printer, it stretches the image and keeps it printing nice and straight and accurate. And that way you shouldn't get any little creases in it um, and it'll print out a lot better. So now that we've got it like that, we're gonna print it through on the Brother printer, which I'll show you. So I'll swap the camera over in a sec um, and let you guys see how it comes out. So this is the stencil paper we're using. Uh, thermal paper and I always get the long one as well just in case you want to do some bigger designs then you don't have to cut them out and stick them together so this is the longest bit of paper that I use um, so preparing that for it printing I flip it over so the yellow side is at the top and at the end just to feed it through the printer I'll keep a little bit of the yellow and I'll tear that side off. Then also you should be left with like a middle sheet and we want to take that out. Get that one out, that's to go. So now all we're left with is the purple piece and the piece that we're printing on. So we're going to pop that in the printer now um, and then see how it comes out. So we're going to pop that in the top here on the Brother Pocket Jet printer. And now you can hold the top button and it'll just feed that in, you know, a little bit so you know it's straight. Now this printer is from Paul Porter and if you search that on Facebook that's where I got the printer and it comes with a group as well that he adds you into and anything anything goes wrong you know all the guidance is there um, that's who I'd recommend for the printer. I've had two of these from him now I just upgraded to this one wouldn't know what model it is he would recommend to you what he thinks and what what style you do and what will print best but yeah these printers are absolutely amazing and that's what I would recommend so you just want a little bit of the yellow in the top make sure it's nice and straight and then we're going to press print on the computer and then it should come out nicely on here now just make sure as it's printing you know holding this side that it goes through nicely like that that's looking good already I can see through there and that looks really nice now you can see there there's a little bit left so if you are doing bigger designs yeah that's ideal and then we just lift that up pop it at the top there and it'll just slide out and there we have it. Let's have a look at this stencil and see how it comes out. Right, the moment of truth. Let's see how it looks. Oh, that is absolutely perfect. The perfect stencil right there.
Now you can see on the stencil it picks up every single detail and I know looking at that I couldn't have done that better with a hand stencil and it is yeah I can't wait to tell you that that looks really nice so yeah let's stick it on and see how it looks right cool now we have the perfect stencil I'm just gonna cut it out I'm gonna put some little slits in the corner then it goes on really nicely without warping on the leg so I'm just gonna cut on the parts of the picture that don't affect it so I'm making some little slices here mainly on the background and we're just gonna mark it up on the leg where we want it so there's probably quite good right and then we're going to use stencil stuff I find that's like the best for sticking it on I always put like two or three coats on this just then it sticks a lot better but you really don't need much on like these stencils they go on really nice like less is more And now you can see it's like wrapping a lot better with them cuts in as well. And if you just try and peel it off nicely without ripping it, then if it isn't correct, you can do it again. Oh, you can see there, that's absolutely perfect. And then when I've got the stencil on, normally what I'll do is I'll try and just like smudge a little bit on these background parts just so then I can see more clearly what's going on with the stencil and it gives me a better like a better idea of if it's correct in the best position so even just flicking in like a few parts where you put the shades it gives you a better look from a distance to see if it's like right or not And there we have it, that is the perfect stencil. Thanks for watching everyone and as I say in all my other videos, if you have any information or any tips and tricks based on this video, please leave us a comment in the comment section. It not only helps me, but it helps everyone else who is watching the video and that's what this is all about. I've had so many requests and messages and support doing these videos and that's why I'm still creating them. And this one here today was probably like the most popular 
um, how do you do your stencils, how is there so much detail in them um, and how do I do them so that's why this video is here today so if you have any other ideas for videos anything you want to see uh, just let me know and I'll see what I can do thanks everyone <laughs>